This is Brian Schwartz from the University of California, San Francisco. I'm going to talk to you now about how to determine empiric antimicrobial therapy in a patient with a suspected infection. Learning objectives are for you to understand the basic principles behind selecting an empiric antibiotic regimen and knowing how to de-escalate once you have a pathogen. Know which antimicrobials are active against methicillin-resistant Staph aureus and know which antimicrobials are active against Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So thinking about how you give antimicrobial therapy, there are kind of three main strategies that we'll talk about. The first one is empiric therapy. This is when you provide antibiotic therapy directed against the most likely pathogens for a given clinical syndrome. For example, you have a patient who has community onset pneumonia. The most common pathogens are Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenza, Mycoplasma, and you pick an antibiotic regimen that would cover all those. For example, levofloxacin, a fluoroquinolone would cover those, and you'd give that empirically. However, you may then provide culture-directed therapy. Culture-directed therapy is treatment directed against a specific pathogen with known antimicrobial susceptibilities. For example, that patient with community-acquired pneumonia, you got a sputum culture, it grew streptococcus pneumoniae, and it was susceptible to penicillin. Therefore, you could give a more narrow-spectrum antibiotic, and you switch the patient from levofloxacin to penicillin to cover penicillin-susceptible streptococcus pneumoniae. So that's empiric and culture-directed therapy. And then the other thing to think about in some cases is prophylaxis. This is when you give antimicrobial therapy to prevent an infection in a patient who doesn't have an infection yet, but is at high risk. For example, a patient who is immunocompromised, like a patient who has HIV, or someone who is undergoing chemotherapy. In an earlier session, we talked about giving antibiotics to prevent infection in patients who are undergoing chemotherapy and have neutropenia. They're missing those important white blood cells to prevent them from infection. Patients who have HIV often will get trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. That's an antibiotic that can prevent infection with for, against pneumocystis gerivecii pneumonia. So let's think about this in a case format. So you have a 42-year-old man. He suffered from a hemorrhagic stroke one week ago, and he's required prolonged intubation and ventilation, and you can see him here. His neurologic status has been gradually improving, and they're getting and he was getting weaned off the ventilator, but he was still intubated. Last night, his oxygen and ventilation status, uh, oxygenation status worsened. His ventilator requirements increased, and he developed a new fever. So this is a change. So what do you think is going on here? Well, you're worried that the patient has hospital-acquired pneumonia, specifically ventilator-associated pneumonia. So when you're thinking about giving empiric antibiotic therapy, you got to think about, well, what are the bacteria that are most likely to cause this infection? And here you can see in his chest x-ray, he's got a new right lower and middle lobe infiltrate suggestive of pneumonia. Well, some of the likely pathogens are Staphylococcus aureus, specifically methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and some other gram-negative rods, like enteric gram-negative rods, like E. coli and Klebsiella, are all in, um, bacteria that can cause ventilator-associated pneumonia. So you need to think about, well, I need to pick some antibiotics that are active against those pathogens. So you want to pick antibiotics that are reliably active, that they get good penetration into the lung and are hopefully not very toxic. So when we think about Staphylococcus aureus, we think that vancomycin and linazolid are both drugs that are active against methicillin-resistant Staph aureus, because we're going to assume it's methicillin-resistant until we know otherwise. Vancomycin um, is a cell wall active agent, and linazolid is a protein synthesis inhibitor. Another drug that acts at the cell um, membrane is daptomycin. Daptomycin is actually extremely active against methicillin-resistant Staph aureus, but there's a funny thing about daptomycin. It is inhibited by surfactant in the lungs and can't and is not effective for the treatment of pneumonia. So although that drug is a great drug, if you put it in the, in the lab setting for MRSA, it's not good for a patient in pneumonia because the antibiotic doesn't work in the lungs. You also want to cover pseudomonas and other gram-negatives. 
So we could pick an anti-pseudomonal penicillin like piperacillin or ticaracillin, a later generation cephalosporin that's active against pseudomonas like cefepime or ceftazidime, or a carbapenem that's active against pseudomonas like imipenem and meropenem. There are other drugs that are active against pseudomonas and gram negatives, but we'd be less likely to use them. And let's explain why. The fluoroquinolones, ciprofloxacin and levofloxacin, are active against pseudomonas, but not as reliably. There's increasing resistance to pseudomonas against these. And when you have a patient who's very sick and you say the resistance rate's 25%, you don't want to be wrong one out of four times. Aminoglycosides are actually very active against pseudomonas and other gram negatives, but they have high levels of toxicity, like we've talked about before, both nephrotoxicity and ototoxicity. And they also don't get very good penetration into the lung. So they make they also seem like a less ideal choice. So let's pick an empiric regimen, vancomycin and cefepime. Vancomycin to cover the potential of MRSA and cefepime to cover the potential for pseudomonas and other gram negatives. You obtain a sputoculture and Staphylococcus aureus grows 36 hours later. So what do you do? You can stop the cefepime because we don't see a gram negative organism. But we'll continue the vancomycin against the Staphylococcus aureus because it may be methicillin resistant. But actually, we find out that it's methicillin susceptible when we get our susceptibilities back, and we can narrow further. We can stop vancomycin and switch to an anti staphylococcal penicillin like nafcillin. And in fact, in patients who have methicillin susceptible Staph aureus, nafcillin is actually a more active drug than vanco and has been associated with better outcomes. And then you're going to complete a treatment course defined. Here, it would probably be around 10 days. This is the end of this session.